So as we dive in today, Jeff, how's it going? Good it, so far. <laughs> awesome, awesome. I know. The day is uh, young. The day is very young. We jump into these and we know we're going to dive into stuff that's either hard for us or hard for others. And well, we're going to we're going to dive right into it. Jeff, are you tired right now? I am extremely tired right now. I actually I actually leave on vacation in about 3 hours, so I'm I'm trying to concentrate <laughs> on this. But you guys need to know as you listen to this or watch this, my my brain is in the mountains somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, we were we were talking about that just as prepping for this like it it's uh it's just a tiring season. It doesn't yeah. necessarily mean that your motivation is not there or something like that, but you're just worn out. Yeah, I, w- I was I was uh, talking to a friend uh, yesterday. He said, "Are you are you burned out? Are you are you done?" And I said, "Actually, no, I'm not. I'm not burned out. I'm not discouraged. I'm just tired, mm. you know." And uh, since March. Uh, I would say a normal day for me has been 12 plus hours. And, and I think a, a lot, a lot of people are like that. Mm-hmm. If you're in leadership, think about teachers who have had to reinvent their whole career, yeah. uh, people who run businesses, et cetera. I mean, we're, we're all going through it. Mm-hmm. And then a lot of us are doing that at work and then having kids at home with school. And so the it's not... Um, I don't know the the discouraging the shocking parts of of the coronavirus pandemic um, have kind of settled in a little bit and now it's just like yeah we just got to grind at it and mm-hmm. and work but so I'm thankful to get a break here I hope I hope you guys get one too pretty soon and it, it's amazing what a little bit of rest does you know th- there's a reason that uh, LeBron James manages his minutes, mm-hmm. right? A little bit of rest puts spring in your step. Half time's an important thing, mm-hmm. you know? And so that that's all. It's just kind of what, it's what the planet's dealing with right now. Ah, yeah. <laughs> uh, LeBron, still such a source of such a joy and sorrow. Oh, uh, I had, time. you know, LeBron's my boy. I, <laughs> no, I uh, awesome. In basketball, for sure. Like, right. I still just love watching him play, so. Yeah, That'll, that's that's a memory that'll last for a long time for me, that championship. is so, just so fresh. Uh, I, I cried yeah. when they won. I, I remember uh, jumping up and down, hugging my friend Joe DiRocco. We were watching it, to, you know, a bunch of friends together. And literally jumping up and down with him, and then I'm like, I think I'm gonna cry. <laughs> you know, like, it was fun. Yeah, it is awesome. Oh, so many things were wonderful about 2016. <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice? <laughs> Hindsight is not 2020. Yeah, that's uh, right. So, that's right. Um, yeah. Well, as we as we dive into this, Jeff, I think you, you just alluded to it. So many of us are experiencing some version of being tired, being exhausted, whether it's physical and quite literal, maybe it's emotional, uh, maybe it's just spiritually, you're just spent and like not knowing kind of what to do next because at least as far as that energy is concerned, it doesn't really seem like we have light at the end of the tunnel yet. Yeah, And so right. um, like how, how do we deal with all this, whether it's the scheduling or the stress or the fear of your health and all these different, like how... How do you start navigating this and not just kind of implode? Yeah, you know, <clears throat> I, that's a massive question, <laughs> and 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 the reality is that um, the answer to that is going to be a little bit different per individual, yep. right? But here, so I think we can talk about some principles here, um, and at least some things that has helped me. One of the biggest things that has helped me in all of this is releasing it to God. So the Bible is super clear that God is sovereign, right? Which means he's He's over all things, he's con- in control of all things. So when we feel like the world is out of control, that that is a false assumption, mm. that God is very much in, in control of things. Why is he letting it happen, et cetera? I'm like, some of those things are mysterious answers. A lot of times what we see is what God is doing, not why he is doing it. So he is um, opening up all kinds of doors. I was looking at a passage in 1 Corinthians 16, I think it's like verse five. Forgive me if I'm off there, but it's in the first 10 verses for sure, 1 Corinthians 16. Uh, Paul is is writing and he says, um, I might be there 
if God allows, hopefully I'll show up, but he's opened effective doors of ministry for me. And so that's what God is doing. Why is he using a worldwide pandemic to do it? I don't have an answer to that. His ways are higher than my ways. But this is, the question is like, what? how do you handle it? And this is, I know what helps me a lot. Most of my stress uh, comes from things that are out of my control. Mm. Things that are in my control, I change, and that alleviates the stress, right? Yeah. So most of the time when I'm stressed about something, it's because something's happening globally, or my boss, or you know your ex, or the kids, or whatever. And you're looking at, and you're stressed about something that I cannot go fix that day, or I can't go fix at all. And I've had to learn to release that. I'll give you the the best example for me uh, with uh, this coronavirus is the wear a mask order. Hmm. So the wear a mask thing, just I hate it. I hate <laughs> the mask. I hate putting it on. I hate the fact that I forgot it in the truck on my way into the gas station. It it aggravates me. It aggravates me physically and all the rest. And so what I was doing was I was spending all this time and energy being mad at something that I didn't have a choice whether to participate in or not, right? Now, should we have to wear a mask? What's the science? Are you really going to get it? I'm like, those are all questions that I don't have clear answers to, and I can't solve it. I'm not the governor. I can't change the order. I can't make Walmart let me in without a mat. Like all of that's over my head and above my pay grade, right? So what I had to do in a situation like that is I have to release it. Hmm. And when I tell you something, it, this is this mass thing, it's just an example of all this, but it's like when I decided I'll just wear the dumb mask, it's amazing how much stress lifted off my shoulders. Hmm. Because I looked and said, I'm just, I'm deciding I'm not doing that. I don't have the energy. Um, I have enough that I can do something about the church, the people of the church, my family, etc. I I need my energy there. But I'm going home being a grumpazoid because I had to wear a mask. I'm being grumpy with the church because some whatever came out in a press conference when I decided to release that over to God, right? God, you have us here. Mask is not moral or immoral. It just is, mm-hmm. like the speed limit, mm-hmm. right? My The pressure that came off of my shoulders was Im- immense because I decided I wasn't going to walk around and be mad about something. Now, do I agree with it or disagree with it? It doesn't matter. Right. Right. So there's a lot of things like that. You know, we can talk about financial stress. Um, If you're $100,000 in debt and you make $35,000 a year, you're not going to solve that problem this this year, right? So you can put in a plan and you can curtail your spending and all the things that you need to do. You can do the disciplines. But worrying about that debt actually accomplishes nothing with it. So this is this is Matthew five. You know this is this is don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Mm-hmm. This is what Jesus is talking about, and and he's he's looking in that passage and he's saying, <clears throat> listen, you you cannot control this. I have it. Focus on today, and get through today. So we I we thought of this thing a few years ago. I call it the the five ninety. Five rule, the number five, the number 90, the number five, 595 rule. Five percent of my energy every day I spend about, I spend analyzing and learning from the past. This is what happened, right? 90 percent of my energy I spend focused on today. It's really the only thing in my control. My decisions to have faith in God, my decisions to forgive, my decisions to move forward, etc., and then 5% of my energy I, I worry about or I invest in planning for tomorrow, right? What we tend to do is spend 90% of our energy in the past, 5 and 5, or 5, 5, 90% of my energy into the future. And that's where worry and stress overwhelms us because we're dialed into things we can't control, mm-hmm. right? 
So it's little things like that that, and by the way, that I would say this stuff is hard for me. <laughs> it's not my personality. I'm super A, like super go get it, super, I'll tell the future what it's gonna be, you know, kind of a thing. <laughs> Um, and and I have to make very cognitive decisions to back away from those things, or they drive me nuts. Mm -hmm. They drive me nuts, and they overwhelm me. Jeff, I just had a moment like that about a week ago, and you're going to remember it in a moment. We were in a meeting with our pastoral team, and we're looking at this fall, and this fall's nuts. nuts. Nothing. The, the playbook of any year in the past is pretty much out the window. Nothing looks the same, it seems, and... We're having this conversation, and all of a sudden, I feel something just kind of bubbling up in me, <clears throat> and I at least had the wherewithal to mostly be quiet. Yeah. <laughs> but after, <laughs> but after the meeting, you came up and you're like, "You doing all right, bud?" <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> like, like you, you saw it on my face, and at the moment, I couldn't tell for sure why I was so upset. Analyzing it afterward, using that five percent to analyze the past, like. I was so invested on how I thought the future was going to play out. As I saw that unravel, it was infuriating. Yeah. Me. And um, and so what you're talking about there, when we put too much investment in what we can't control in the future, that's where our emotions start to spike, which, it, which just depletes the tank of anything we have right away. Yep. And, and you lose the moment. You know, a couple episodes ago, we talked about the kids being at home. Mm -hmm. If I'm so dialed into when are they going back, when are they going back, when are they going back, when are they, I lose all the value of them being home. Yeah. And and I don't I don't want to say this um, in a in a patronizing way. It, you're talking to the king of plans, mm -hmm. right? I literally have a 50 year plan for my life mapped out. So <laughs> he, Heidi, he does. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> it's I'm not exaggerating. So Heidi teases me about it, you know, but. Um, but I'm on schedule, and uh, that's important to note. <laughs> but but um, so I I have to really wrestle. What I'm sharing right now is I do not handle stress or wear stress well. It takes a toll on my body and my mind. These are like little things from Scripture that I'm like, Lord. I have to make this your pro your problem. You know, even the church. Like we come into a big uh, like financial campaign at the church. I can't control the people of God. No, I can cast vision, but God has to unite us. And so, I I've learned. I'm like, oh, what what's going to happen? I would stress. I don't know what my blood pressure would do. And I've had to relax into it, where I'm doing my best. I'm working as hard as I can work. I'm you know the relationships, all the rest, but. God has to move his people. I can't do that. Mm -hmm. So you bring that into family. <clears throat> you know, you bring that into your job. You bring that into your marriage. You bring that into, and it, it's it's pushing back and settling into the sovereignty of God, resting in that. It's not being passive. It's not being naive. It, it's actually... Um, I don't think the coronavirus has created insecurity. I think the coronavirus has revealed the insecurity we all live in and don't realize that we do. Yeah, right. It's this. This is the way the world actually is. Mm -hmm. You know, your 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 life can change in a second. You know, um, so so the responses are the are the same. You know, and then they have to become habitual. It's not a crisis anymore. Mm -hmm. Now this is a bit of pattern that we're, it's a season we're going to live in. Um, I like the the analogy like it's not a blizzard, it's winter, right? And it might be a mini ice age, and we don't know sure until we travel a, a little bit further. That is really good, Jeff. Now, as you say all this, one thing I know about you is you're also not just giving the advice to hey, wake up in the morning realize it's not a big deal and get on with your life. Nope. Like, so what is some of the ways that we can kind of put a handle on this and say, if I'm feeling exhausted, if I'm feeling emotionally drained, like, what do I do <laughs> to yeah. like, to correct that and see the, the, the solution start to at least present itself? I think this is a, this is a big place where the biblical principle of Sabbath plays in. Um, and uh, the word Sabbath in the Old Testament, it, it often referred to a day of the week. Obviously, that's a big part of what, 
what the Sabbath is, but the principle of that was the idea of stopping, resting, and reconnecting. That was the purpose of the Sabbath. And so if you were, you would stop your labor. So if you're a farmer, you wouldn't farm. If you're a computer programmer, you wouldn't program your computer kind of thing. And so God would, that, that, that law in the Old Testament becomes a principle in the New Testament. And you would watch Jesus' Sabbath, like some of his stuff in the garden, things like that, times when he would get away with his disciples. That was a Sabbath principle, Mm -hmm. stopping, resting, reconnecting. And I've been, during this long haul of corona especially, uh, Heidi and I have been working hard to do Sabbath stuff. So uh, my day off is Friday. You know, we pastors, we work the weekends. Yep. And so instead of a massive house project, instead of a massive yard project, which is what we would typically do, there's more bandwidth. We finally had the free time. Let's go after it. Because we're tired, um, I've been like stopping. So like I'm putting down the hammer, I'm putting away the computer, I'm setting down the phone and barring an emergency, I'm not engaging those things uh, on that day. I'm resting. So we're enjoying, uh, nature is a big deal to me. And so like, we're enjoying our metro parks. Like, it's hilarious. Um, We've been discovering metro parks all around us. We're like, we've lived here for 27 years and never (laughs) knew that was around the corner. Kind of, because you don't stop enough, you know, to, to do it. And so we're we're looking at that and saying how how do we rest? Um, I'm taking a nap, mm-hmm. you know. I ha- we have a hammock. I'm falling asleep in the hammock. If I beat Heidi to it, you know, <laughs> um, and then sitting around the fire, those kind of things, and then reconnecting. Usually, when I'm sitting around that fire, I have um, uh, the, either the scripture with me or a book about God. So I'm, I'm not reading history. I'm not watching a movie necessarily. Um, although, like, uh, one thing I have been watching, for instance, is The Chosen, mm-hmm. which is, if you guys haven't watched that oh, yet, you should grab so it. Good. But it's about Jesus. It's, it's phenomenal, actually. So I, I want to stop what I'm doing. I want to rest my body, my mind, and my soul. And then I want to connect my soul and my mind to Christ. Mm-hmm. And it's amazing, it has sustained me. And, and we have been um, practicing that discipline in a different way during this long haul. And that gets me to uh, a vacation or a break or you know those kind of things. Um, but that's something that you can plug in. And by the way, you can have you have a Sabbath day. You can have Sabbath moments. You know, getting up a little bit before the kids wake up, or staying up a little bit after they go to bed, but turning off like ice road truckers. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. and spending some time with the Lord. I'll I'll bet you if you put your kids to bed, um, and you put on some worship music and open the Scripture. I bet you you'll feel the tension leave your back. I bet you you'll fall asleep, mm-hmm. and that's okay. Yes, it is. You know, but it, it's those kind of things that they put a little bit of charge in our battery, you mm-hmm. know, and and keeps us moving. And we and I think that's why God patterned this stuff for us. The seventh day, God rested. Like He's putting a pattern in place, and He's showing us like you're created in My image. This is what your body needs mm-hmm. too. Yeah, I, it's. Th- this is why I wanted to make sure we drew this out because I think those are the steps that all of us we can figure out how to find that time. You know, I, I, in my own life, in my wife's life, in my friend's life, and then of course anybody I come into contact with, we always have time for something low key. Right. You know, we can watch the thing on Netflix. We can find the new docuseries on Disney Plus. We can, you know, get out and and enjoy our hobbies. If we can find even the smallest sliver in our schedule to do those things, swap some of it out for this Sabbath stuff that you're talking about. And that will begin to not only um, give you the refresh that you're encouraging us with, but it also allows us to want more of it. Yep. Um, it's hard sometimes to kind of cold turkey that. Some of you might be listening like, I don't do anything that Jeff just talked about. I never stop. I definitely don't 
really take the time to truly reconnect with God, except maybe show up to church every once in a while or listen to a really cool podcast called Nick Messages. Uh, but <laughs> With Jeff Bogue. <laughs> but we're so out of tune with those personal rhythms that starting them seems insurmountable. And so it's just start. Just start and, and find, the, find the windows, guys. The, if you're driving to work, listen to the Bible instead of, instead of the morning news. If you're driving home, listen to worship music instead of Trivisano kind of mm-hmm. a thing. Like, like there, there are these windows. A lot of it is it, you're going to eat. A lot of it's what you decide to put in, mm-hmm. right? And so fit whatever's good, whatever's right, whatever's admirable, whatever's praiseworthy. Think about such things, the mm-hmm. Apostle Paul says. And when we're bombarded with politics and division and social issues and coronavirus, it literally fatigues the brain and the soul. Mm -hmm. And so different, better, Christ-centered input is the key to that. You know, I I think the people that this is hardest for a lot of times are uh, either stay-at-home parents or parents who now have to work from home with little kids. Mm -hmm. Like, you just do not get a break, you know? And I remember that season very well, and Heidi and I have six children, so I just remember, like, it it was nonstop. This is where you just be intentional. Decide that uh, 1.30 in the afternoon or noon is nap time, or it's screen time. And Frozen 2 may be your best friend, (laughs) but... But you also take advantage. Let the kids watch the movie they're begging, the, begging you to watch, but you take advantage of it. Get the coffee, get the scripture, refresh your soul, connect your soul a little bit. Um, and, and what I would encourage you not to do is the kids have Frozen on and you have your favorite Netflix show on in the other room, mm-hmm. right? Because you're turning your brain off, but you're not, refreshing it. You're not reconnecting it. And so just balancing that out a little bit. It's so good. Guys, if you're listening to this, um, allow this to be an encouragement. Take, Take some steps toward this. Or if this is something that's already a practice in your life and you're still feeling exhausted, like maybe God's encouraging you to refresh your rhythms a little bit mm. and and find some different or more time with him as well. And then allow this to be an ongoing conversation. These are things, of course, that as a church family, we want to help resource and pray for you about. Uh, talk about this in your groups and with your friends that also follow Christ. Like, this is not something to leave on the wayside, especially as we continue to navigate a season like this. Yeah. Jeff, I needed this today. Uh, we talked about how you're about to leave for vacation. I'm exhausted. I'm tired too. I don't get the. I'm actually going on vacation in like a week, um, so I'm not counting down hours. Did you yet. just come back from vacation? Nope. <laughs> I I thought I canceled your vacation, and made you come back in the middle of it. Oh, that yeah yeah. There was that. <laughs> Never mind. There was a two day stint that I was going to take off, and you were like, "Hey, come back," uh, which made total sense in the world. And honestly, I felt like God kind of set it all up. In That's case that right. sounds terrible to the people listening, but it all worked out well. <laughs> Um, but seriously, I needed this. I needed the reminder of this, and I'm excited as we continue to help each other uh, kind of navigate the noise of all the messaging coming our way of the different ways to unplug. Reconnecting with God is the way to go. So thanks for that. If you ever want to submit questions, right, if you want to have something answered here on Mixed Messages with Jeff Bogue, you can always reach out to us. Go to the website, uh, bath.gracechurches.org slash mixed messages, and you can fill out a quick form. Let us know what you're thinking. What are your what are the things that you're pondering? What issues are you coming up with? We would love to help draw each other to the scriptures and kind of navigate those things. And of course, you can always join us on the weekends. If you're in the Akron area, hit up one of our services here at the Bath campus or one of our other campuses even. And then of course, online, we have services as well each weekend. Go ahead and subscribe, follow us, send us a direct message if you need anything, and we'll get back to you as soon as we absolutely can. Thanks for jumping in today as we continue to connect with God's voice through all the mixed messages around us. We'll see you next time.